Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video and in this video we are going to be continuing on with our sort of journey in Swift on the on the channel. By now, I I hope you've at least taken a look at the Swift series that we've done. Uh, it has 48 videos. Before you begin this vi this series or the concurrently uh, occurring Swift UI series that I'm doing, uh, I, I expect that you have some knowledge of Swift, so if you don't, I, I, I encourage you to go through the 48 Swift videos that I have already, so you are ready for this, uh, this series and or the Swift UI series, because I'm not gonna stop and, like, explain certain Swift concepts or whatever. I'm going to expect that you know what I'm talking about. Now, of course, if there's something there that I didn't cover in um, in that series, then yeah, I'm gonna try to explain it to the best of my ability without like go coming to a screeching halt. But for the most part, I expect that you know what I'm talking about. All right, so this series is going to be on iOS development using UIKit. So let's talk a little bit, as the title of this video suggests, about what UIKit is, kind of give you a brief introduction into what that actually is. So UIKit has been around for almost 20 years now. It's 16 years old, if you can believe it. Uh, it has been around since 2008, and it was introduced alongside iPhone OS 2 or iOS 2. Uh, because the iPhone didn't always have UIKit. Um, the iPhone, uh, the original iPhone with iPhone OS 1, uh, didn't use UIKit. Instead, they expected that you use web apps for everything. Which, in a way, was kind of the future and, and, and still kind of is, but not quite. We can't go web for everything still. Um... So UIKit is Apple's original UI framework for the iPhone. Uh, they have a UI framework that's older than UIKit called AppKit, but that's for macOS development and not iOS. Uh, the neat thing, though, is that um, ever since... I believe it was... I forget exactly when, but... For a, ver for a while now, you have been able to use UIKit to build native macOS experiences using Mac Catalyst. So if that's something that interests you, uh, let me know and I can consider doing a series on it. But um, primarily, uh, UIKit is built for the iOS devices like the iPhone and the iPadOS devices like, you know, the iPad. Uh, you can also use UIKit to build apps for Vision OS, though they recommend SwiftUI for that platform. Um, you can also build apps for watchOS and tvOS using UIKit, which is really nice. Um, UIKit can do all kinds of stuff. It You can do animations, you can... Uh, put all kinds of different controls on the screen. You can build your own controls, um, all that kind of stuff. You can work with graphics. You can work with maps. Uh, well, when you're integrating with other APIs like MapKit or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sorry about that. That was my phone going off. Uh, but anyway, so when we're dealing with... Uh, UI kit, it is it is very much different than something like Swift UI uh, because UI kit uses the traditional imperative programming paradigm, whereas Swift UI uses a declarative syntax. So you will uh, you will find a lot of differences, right? Uh, UIKit is still being used in apps around the globe and all over the App Store because, well, it's been around longer and more apps have been using it. 
Uh, so UIKit is still being maintained by Apple. It's still getting new features. In fact, in WWDC 24, in this upcoming June, it's mid-April right now, uh, in WWDC 24, we're expected to get even more features for UIKit alongside SwiftUI. So that'll be so that'll be exciting. Um, another thing about UIKit is that we use we we have the option of using what's called a storyboard, and we'll talk a little bit about storyboards in the storyboard versus programmatic UI video. Uh, but just know that it's all you need to know right now is that it's a way for you to drag and drop uh, user controls onto your onto a screen and then build your app that way, right? And configure it at, configure it and all that stuff. Um, now, UIKit is very important if you're looking for a, a job in iOS development right now. Because again, it's still being used, and it's the and it's the dominant UI framework still. So most jobs re require that you use it. In fact, I still see jobs that are that that require you use Objective C with UIKit, and and Objective C uh, has you know that's been around longer than Swift. Um, you know, and uh, Swift is only introduced in 2013. 2013-2014. So, it's so it's much younger than Objective C, which is which is well over 20 years old. So, really, that just about does it for uh, what UI Kit is and what you can do with it. Let's kind of talk a little bit also about how this series is going to work, right? Because this series is much more focused on a singular platform, that being uh, iOS and you know the iOS and iPad OS ecosystem, uh, we're not going to have as many videos as the SwiftUI series, because in SwiftUI it's much more general. There's a lot more ground to cover because that is you know that's compatible with more uh, more operating systems. It, it, you know, SwiftUI is available on everything. UI kit, not so much. So the scopes are different. And so in this series, initially, there's going to only be 85 videos compared to SwiftUI's over 150 videos. But that will change. And the reason why that'll change is because of, uh, you know, new features to UI kit for dub dub and if i decide to you know put more put more topics in like unit testing or something like that uh, because that because maybe i want to maybe i think a topic like that would be beneficial so so the number of videos might change so just keep that in mind um, but yeah, really, that's about it for this video. Thank you all so very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.